Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Hitchings. Thanks for joining us today. Today is going to be part four of our Mastering Options class offered by Trade Machine. And today we're going to talk about diagonals, some multi-leg spreads, and, and some risk, including theta and gamma. Yeah, thanks for being here. If you've missed any of the earlier recordings, we encourage you to go back and uh, dive into those. And thanks again for being a member of Trade Machine Community. As you all probably know by now, I'm the CTO at Capital Market Labs, and I'm responsible for the tech stack. And more importantly for today, I, I developed Trade Machine, and I've been in the uh, options trading world for, for quite a while. So this is a breakdown of, of how we're going to cover things today. Uh, we're going to talk about managing time risk. You know, as you own options over time, how they how they might be degrading in value and some of the strategies you can use to prevent that. We're going to get into diagonals, so kind of combining vertical spreads with time spreads. And we're going to dive a little deeper into straddles and talk about some other strategies for taking advantage of, of some of the benefits of straddles. If you're looking to stay delta neutral, um, how you can still make money off straddles, even if the stock just zigzags back and forth, and also how you can have some greater chances of profitability with them. Um, finally, we're going to dive deeper into understanding not only delta, but how delta changes over time, and, and just understanding what that looks like and how you can manage that risk a little bit. But first, I'm going to go over the standard legal disclaimers. This is not a solicitation to buy or sell any security ever. This is not advice. You should read the characteristics and risks of standardized options. The results here are provided for general information purposes as a convenience to the viewers. The materials are not a substitute for obtaining professional advice from a qualified person, firm, or corporation. Trading futures and options involves the risk of loss. Please consider carefully whether futures or options are appropriate to your financial situation. Only risk capital should be used when trading futures or options. Investors could lose more than their initial investment. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. The risk of loss in trading can be substantial. Carefully consider the inherent risks of such investments in light of your financial condition. All right, so let's dive in. I'm going to start off with uh, squeezing the juice and managing time risk. So let's let's circle back a little bit and let's think about the most basic options position that we could have long call and let's just let's just dive into some of the characteristics of this so a lot of you guys are experienced traders some of you are, are relatively new to options but let's just start stating some of the obvious things about about a call what is what are the characteristics that we've learned about that you already know about about owning a call okay so it's when you're long options it's going to cost you some money to get into it. It's going to be a net debit on your account. It's going to have positive delta. So as stock price goes up, the value of your call is going to go up as well. And as stock price goes down, the value of your call will go down. Additionally, higher implied volatility will increase the value of the option. When you're long options, implied volatility is one of the core drivers of an option's value because it tells you that the option can cover a much wider range of events. And the wider the range of events, then the more, more benefits there are to owning the option. And so as implied volatility goes up, the value of that option is going to go up as well. Okay, and at expiration, we know that the time value of the option, the premium in the option will go to zero and we'll just be left with the intrinsic value. 
the the amount of discount you can get on buying the stock. So if the if you have a hundred strike call, stock goes to one ten. All you'll be left with is the ten dollars, the the discount you can buy stock at, and there'll be no time value left. And so therefore, owning the option over time, you're going to be losing a little bit of that time value every day, and you're hoping that the stock's going to move fast enough to make up for it. So what's another way of saying that the higher implied volatility helps us? It's kind of a quick aside. The Greek, which is actually not a Greek letter in the alphabet, I don't believe, but vega is the term that they use to describe your exposure to implied volatility. And if your position has a positive vega, then that means as implied volatility goes up, that the value of your position overall will go up. Specifically, if it goes up by a point, what's the change in the value of your option? And you can add all the vegas together and say, what's the, what's the change in the value of your position? Stock has delta, but stock doesn't have vega. Um, so this will only be applicable for options. But it's helpful if you get into more complicated option positions, then oftentimes looking at it at the sort of combined value of all the Greeks will be a helpful way to understand you know, what, what you can expect or how things can change in the future and how that can affect you. So as we've talked about, the passage of time is going to hurt us when you're long options. In this case, we're just long a call. And how can you, what's another way to phrase that? So the Greek that describes how time affects your position is theta. And if you're long options overall, then as time passes, you're losing premium. Or if you're sort of long premium, then as time passes, that will hurt you. And so that's why they showed theta sort of comes as negative by default, because as time moves forward, the value of the option goes down. Positive theta would be if you've sold options and then every day that passes, you're, you're able to buy the option back at less. And so then you'd have positive theta. Your, your overall position is going up as time passes. Okay, so here's a quick summary of our call. And so we know that the passage of time is going to hurt us with a long call because we have a negative theta or long premium. But is that going to be exactly the same for options that are at the money versus out of the money? We touched on this in some, some earlier classes, but we're going to dive in a little deeper today. OK, so let's just plug some values into an options calculator and say, like, OK, well, what is the actual theta? Let's, let's look at these and measure them and see what, what are these values actually look like. So if we're, if we're looking at an underlying that's at $100 and an exercise price of an at-the-money option at 100 <clears throat> and we're 30 days out to expiration, and interest rates have gone up a bit recently, so we're going to call the interest rate 5%. This shows dividend yield of 1%, but we actually, 1% or 0% won't have a big effect. And we're going to plug in a volatility of around 35%. And the the theta that we're ending up with is about a little over seven cents. So that means per option that you have control of, so $7.30 per contract is about how much you'd expect your position to go down in value every day if you owned a 30-day at-the-money option in a stock that was at 100 when you have the at the money option and the volatility is around 35. It's going to cost you around $7 a day at this point in time to, to own the option. Now, if you jump all the way down to five days left until expiration, at this point, owning the option is going to cost you about $17 per contract. So it's gone from $7 a day 
of cost up to $17 a day to own this at the money option. If you then jump out to just the very last day before expiration, this value is going to jump up to $37 a day that it's going to cost you to own that at the money option. Another way to look at it is on the day of expiration, if stock's pinned at exactly $100 and you have the right to buy stock at $100, the option's going to have to go up about 37 cents per share. The stock's going to have to go up to about 37 cents above $100 in order for you to break even. So if stock's at 100, it's going to have to go up to $100.37 to, to make up for the value, the time value that you're going to lose. And since there's only one day left, basically the, the whole position is probably worth about what you're going to lose in that one day. Okay, so let's look at an out of the money option now. Let's say, okay, what if the exercise price is 110? And let's go back to 30 days till expiration. So now this, this is going to be a less valuable option because it's giving you the right to buy the option at a higher price. And that option is going to lose about close to $5, $4.80 in value per day out at that price point. So that's pretty substantial considering that the that the 110 option is, is likely, I mean, it's definitely gonna be substantially less value than the 100 strike call. And what happens when we go to five days until we're just a short amount of time away from expiration? Well, at this point in time, that out of the money option, if it's $10 out of the money, you have five days until expiration, stock's at $100, and you have the right to buy stock at $110. You need that stock to move 10% before you have any intrinsic value in the option at all, more than 10%. So at this point, that's not very likely. The value of the option is not very high, and, and the remaining value, the amount that can actually decay in the next five days is also not high. And so at that point in time, this out-of-the-money option has very little value left in it. And so you're only, it's only costing you about $1.20 a day to hold that each contract. And on the last day, there's the, the theoretical value is so low that the theta is essentially zero because the options value is essentially zero. You know, the chance of the stock moving 10% in one day when the volatility, when it tends to move 35% per year is so low that it gets into rounding errors. And so this all rounds out to about zero. So what is this telling us? And what's it telling us about, about managing time risk? You know, $7 a day doesn't sound too bad, or even $37 a day. But if you have 10 contracts or 20 contracts, all of a sudden it's costing you maybe $300 a day or $600, $700 a day to own that position, to own those 20 contracts or 10 contracts. As we look at this, Right now, this would essentially be a call spread if you're going to own some combination of these things. And you can see that if you had the 100, 110 call spread 30 days out, then in, if you had just the naked call, the position would cost you about $7.30 per day to own if you had the at the money naked call. And if you had the call spread, then it would go down substantially. So if you have about $7 a day and you look at the actual value of the contract, so this, this option, if it's 30 days out at the money, 30 vol, would be about $415 per contract. And it's costing you about $7 per day. So that's it's costing you about 1.6% per day to own it. You know, that'd be a high margin on your stock if it costs you 1.6% per day to own your stock, it'd be a loan shark. But for, for options, that, that's not too bad. What about this out of the money option? Well, the out of the money options value is down at about $102 for the contract. And so 
the four dollars and eighty cents in that case is actually around around four point seven percent per day to own that. So it's going down about five percent per day that you're owning that out of the money option. So you can see that the that the percentage cost to own that option is is quite a bit more substantial, and it's it's dropping in value pretty fast at this point in time. You know, it can't can't keep up losing 5% per day for very long between, before there's nothing left. The 30-day option is only losing 1.5% in the, that for the at the money, and the out of the money 110 call is losing 5%. So right there, that tells you, it tells you something about sort of offsetting the cost to hold this thing. So the simplest thing to do is to say, okay, well, what if we just did something we've already talked about? What if we just owned the bull call spread? We bought the 100 call, we sold the 110 call 30 days out. Well, now we can say the cost to own this thing, we could look at it from a net perspective. say, okay, well, the, the long position is costing us $7.30, but we're gaining back $4.80 for the position that we're short, at least at this point in time. And so what's the, what's the combined value of that? So combined, the overall position is costing us about $2.50 per day per contract to own this position. So that's that's substantially less. It's come down quite a bit. So if the stock involved doesn't move, that's that's what it's going to cost us, $2.50. And obviously we're hoping for it to move in, in the right direction, move up. And so or start getting some value out of that 100 strike call. So the question becomes, if it's costing us $2.50 initially, how much is it going to cost us you know, the, the days before expiration, as you're 14 days out or five days out or one day out? Does that, does that amount stay constant? Because that can inform us something like, should we be holding this call spread through expiration? Is there some, should we roll it at some point in time? Should we, should we close out the upper level strike and then just own the 100 call. So we can see when we are five days out, that at the money option is now costing us $17 a day per contract. And the out of the money option is only gaining us back $1.20. So all of a sudden, our cost per day has gone from $2.50 to $15.80 to own this. So from, a, from the perspective of having the call spread, it's getting more expensive to own this thing over time. And as we learned about in a previous class, if, if, the, if the stock had gone up a lot, this is a scenario where stock hasn't changed. If the stock goes up a lot, if the stock goes to 112 or 115, then the situation is reversed. And why is that? Once that 100 call is deeply in the money, it's going to behave a lot more like stock. It's going to have a lot less sort of option ability. It's going to have a lot less time value built into it because it's not as sensitive. You pretty much know you're going to exercise it the chance that it's going to end up in the money is going to be at 90, 95%. And it's just, it's not as sensitive to the change of stock at that point, percentage wise. And so the time value is going to be much lower for the in the money call. And the, the one that you sold is going to be much closer to at the money. It's going to have much more premium and time value. At that point, if that was the case, then your theta situation would be the reverse. You would be positive theta because there'd be more time value in the one you sold and you would be making money as time passes. But in this scenario, we're saying, okay, if stock hasn't moved and you went from 30 days out to five days out, all of a sudden the position is costing you 
$15.80 per day to hold it versus $2.50 per day at the beginning to hold it. So maybe that, maybe that tells you you want to roll it at that point in time. Or maybe, you, maybe you, when you craft the strategy, you want to roll it after half the time passes at the 15-day mark. Maybe you want to roll it because all of a sudden it's starting to cost you a lot more money to hold it. And there's some other things we can do too. We can actually optimize even a little bit further for this type of scenario. So what could we do to reduce the cost of the position to own over a longer period of time? Out here, the at the money option is cheaper to own and it gets more expensive to own over time. Whereas the out of the money option is, is the opposite. So out of the money option is losing all of its value a ways out and as you get close in, it has very little value left and the cost of owning it is very small and the chance of it being worth anything is very small. But when you're short this option, you've gotten most of the value out of it. You've extracted the, the, the time value of the option, the juice in the option, if you will, already. What happens if you roll this out further? Does this, does this, I mean, the time value of the theta can't go to zero and this can't go to infinity. It can't go more than the value of the option. What does this look like? Does this continue to rise for this particular scenario? Does this continue to fall? So let's look out 45 days and 60 days and see, see how that looks to help us craft a strategy. So when we look out further for the at the money and the out of the money, what does that, what does that look like? So we see that the at the money does continue to be a little cheaper to own over time, but not, not as dramatically as it was before. So $37 a day with one day left. And, and once you get out to 60 days, it's, it's $5.40 per day per contract to own it, but not, not radically different than 30 days out. So this does continue to go down and it, and it starts to flatten out. And an interesting thing is happening here. We actually hit some kind of peak value in this out of the money option. And it's different for every scenario, for every volatility combination and, and strike combination for how far out of the money something is. But this was getting more and more expensive to own. And then it kind of flattened out and started drifting down. So the, the sort of optimal position, if you're trying to minimize your time value, you can start to see that they're maybe just owning the 60 day at the money and selling the 60 day out of the money. Maybe there's a better way to do it because you're not getting quite as much value every day from shorting this option as you would from having something in here, which is kind of the, the time where it's losing the most value. So if this, in this scenario, if, if the 30 day option is losing the most value here for the out of the money, and if you go further back in time to the 60 day option, if you're losing a little bit less value, well then why not combine these two? If you own the 60 day at the money call, any option that you sell that has a maturity of 60 days or less, and has a strike price above the option you own, it's still gonna look, look like a pretty safe position to your brokerage because this call that's longer maturity and lower strike is always gonna have a higher value than anything of the same days to expiration with a lower strike or with a fewer days to expiration in a, in, a, in a higher strike, excuse me. So you're not taking on any additional risk by, by combining different times to expiration when you own the 100 call and you're selling the 110 call if your days to expiration is shorter. So it's still very safe from that perspective. It's your brokerage is not going to charge you a bunch of extra 
margin or it's not going to, it shouldn't be, shouldn't classify you as a different risk of options trading, you know, for most brokerages. But the time value is actually going to be sort of optimized for this scenario. So we can see that the, the total cost to own this thing is this is this combination for the ones we looked at, this is going to be this is going to be the lowest of all. And if we wanted to, for this scenario, if we wanted to understand, okay, well, what's the actual, what's the delta of this? I mean, we know it's a hundred strike call on a hundred, you know, stock priced at a hundred dollars and it's 30 days in the future and the vol is 35. But as we learned, those, those are hard to translate to a stock that has 60 vol and is 15 days from expiration and the stock is trading at $17 knowing what the equivalent of the 110 or the 100 strike are it can be complicated. That's why we use Delta because Delta packages a lot of that information up. You say, okay, well, I know that I like to sell the, the 40 or the 30 or the 10 or the 20 Delta option in these scenarios. You don't have to go back into your option price calculator and, and sort of start from scratch on this. If the next time you want to do a similar position, the delta is going to be a really good guide for you. And same with the back tester. It's going to be a really helpful way to tell the back tester the type of position you're looking for with a single number. So what are the what are the deltas here? So when we look at these, that for the out of the money option, the delta is right around 20, 1920. And we always know that for the, for an at the money option, the delta is going to be really close to 50. Sometimes 52, sometimes 51, just because of the way that stock changes over time. There's an assumption built in, in pretty much all of finance that all of your assets are appreciating at the sort of inflation, more or less. That all of that, whatever the inflation rate is, that all assets are going up. Your houses, your stocks are all going up at that amount. So that's why sometimes you'll see an at the money call has a slightly higher than 50 delta is because it's assumed that even though it's at the money now, stock's going to slowly drift up with time. But we'll just call it 50 delta for this scenario. So when we look at these two things, we're saying, okay, we're going to, we're now owning the 60 day 50 delta call, and we are selling the 30 day 20 delta call. And per contract, now our cost of owning the position has gone down to 60 cents per day per contract. So that's, that's pretty great. Further, if you, if you hold this for a while, that front month option is going to expire. And if stock continues to go up, as we learned with, with various time spreads, all of a sudden you have a, there's nothing, there's no ceiling on how high it can go. If you, if you do end up owning it, you don't roll the position or you don't close it with the front month option. All of a sudden you'll just have the long call. So if the sky, if the, if the stock skyrockets after that, then you get all the extra benefit. So let's say you, you try to do this over the course of, you know, a lot of time, like you look at this, it seems, seems fine now. It costs a little bit less to own the position than it would have been the naked call. But how do you know if this is actually a good strategy or not? This is one of the areas that a trade machine is, is extremely helpful. So we can actually we can actually create the strategy. In fact, the strategy is actually already in trade machine, this diagonal. It's a diagonal because it's going out in time. So you're looking further out and you're also going up because you're looking at a higher priced strike price on the call you're selling. So that's why they call it a diagonal because it's changing in two directions. When we back test this against the NASDAQ 100 over the last three years, we, we find that it, it generates an average of a 228% return. That's, that's pretty solid. 
But then the question becomes, well, okay, what's the best time to, to do these strategies? You know, the market's been really choppy recently. Maybe it's not the right time right now. How can we, how can we figure out that? How do we, how do we know just because it's done well in the last three years, like is, is for a particular stock today, what's, what's the best time to actually initiate the strategy? And this is where technicals come in great handy. Technicals can, can help you optimize timing for, for when to get into a stock. And the first two strategies on the Today tab are the Bollinger by the dip and the MACD momentum. Both of those use this exact strategy. They use the 60-day at the money 50 delta call, and they sell the 30 day 20 delta call. And then they simply roll both options with the front month. And so this link, or if you just go to the trade machine and today tab and you click the question mark, you can find a link to the video and it'll dive into all the details about, about how the technicals on those strategies work. What else can we do with those? Well, it turns out that on the scan tab of the trade machine, there are some earnings strategies with this 14-day pre-earnings bullish diagonals that use a very similar concept. And what they do is they help finance owning some options going into expiration, going into the earnings event rather, by selling a call that will expire before earnings and then continuing to hold the call through the earnings. So you can capture the earnings events, but, but as the fall starts increasing, you can finance owning that option a little bit. So this is a popular strategy. So we can see on the custom earnings, we're gonna initiate the position 14 days before earnings. And then this particular strategy closes the day before earnings. And so what this strategy will do is capture the increase in vol, because the 14-day option is going to capture the earnings movement. But by, and if we look at the actual strategy here, we're going to sell the seven-day option. So that will offset if the stock moves against us a little bit or if other things are going on, it's not gonna move as much with the vol. But we're gonna sell this option seven days out and it's going to expire before the earnings event, this 14-day this call is going to probably have increased implied volatility going into earnings as people are starting to buy options into earnings. But in this particular strategy, we're not gonna take the earnings risk. We're just going to try to capture the vol movement and then exit a day before earnings. So that, that's another type of strategy that you can do with these diagonals. Okay, so we are going to move on to take a second look at, at owning straddles. We learned last time that when you initiate a straddle, you're, you're basically hoping for stock to move way up or way down so that the straddle can start to generate some value for you either the call or the put is going to need up, need to end up in the money or else you're gonna lose money on both of them. This can be a problem if stock is just zigzagging around. But basically when stock starts going up a little bit, you're going to be able to make the most money from stock continuing to go up. And so you're, the delta, if you make money by stock moving in one direction or another, then you have a delta position. So this is the scenario that we looked at last time with stock at 82. 
stock goes to 84, all of a sudden you have a much easier path to making money if stock goes up. And so you're biased towards stock moving up. And if you're biased towards stock moving up, that means that you're long deltas. And same if it starts going down. So this is a way to look at that straddle inside of thinkorswim. The straight lines here are at expiration, and this kind of curved line is, is what the price would be today. So this difference here between the value it is today and the value at expiration, that's essentially the amount of time value that's left in the position. And stock hasn't moved far, but you can see that the, the closest way to make money is for the stock to continue moving up. So you're, you're delta positive, you're long deltas in that scenario. But if, what if you want to own a straddle and you're hoping just to have vol increase? What if you're expecting a lot of vol, but you don't have an opinion about if the stock's going to go up or down? Or what if you're expecting the vol, what if you're expecting the stock to just sort of bounce around in a range? How do you make money off of that? What if you don't want to take a delta risk? So if you want to keep delta neutral, but benefit from stock moving around, then we know that as the stock goes up, your call is going to be slightly in the money. When you're slightly in the money, your delta position Going to be long after this call, and the negative position for the put is going to be slightly lower. So maybe this goes to 55 delta, maybe it goes to 60 delta, maybe the put goes down to 45 or 40, you know, which is a negative delta. So if this is at 60 delta and minus 40 delta, well, what if we don't want to be long? deltas what if we what if we still want to not speculate on stock directional movement back and forth yes but not moving along ways in one direction well we know we're long now about 20 deltas we can just add the deltas up in our position say okay well our, our call delta is a lot higher than our put delta we're long about 20 deltas well we know that a delta is the amount that the position will change for every dollar change in stock. So by definition, a single share of stock has one delta, and 100 shares of stock has 100 delta. So if we have 20 deltas too many, well, we can short stock. Now every time stock goes up a dollar, we're going to lose $20 in the stock. We're going to make $20 in our option position. And so the stock movement will no longer be affecting us. Well, then what if stock goes back down? What if it goes from 83 all the way down to 81 again? Well, now we can see that the put delta is up at negative at 60 and the call has gone down to 40. So we're, we're now short some deltas and plus we're short stock. So we're short 20 deltas on the options and we're short another 20 deltas in stock. So our, our total delta position now is negative 40. What if we don't want to be negative 40? What, what can we do? Well, we can just buy 40 shares of stock. Now we're already short 20 shares. And so what we're actually going to do is close 20 shares of short stock and we're going to open a position for another 20 shares of long stock. So now the negative 60 delta put, the 40 delta call is going to balance out with 20 shares of stock and we'll be back to zero delta. And if stock goes back up to 82, then the call and the put delta will be back to about 50 apiece. And if we want to get back to delta neutral, we just sell off the stock and we're back to where we started. So we did a lot of buying and selling of stock. The stock price just ended up where it started. 
And from the straddle's perspective, time has passed and we have no intrinsic value in either option. So what did we accomplish? So in this scenario, we're gonna sell the 20 remaining shares to get back to zero delta. But, but from moving up and down so much, what did, we, what did we get out of this? Well, let's track it. So when the stock was at 83, we, we shorted 20 shares of stock. Then when stock went down to 81, we closed our short position and we opened another 20 shares of stock. And then when stock went back up to 82, we closed that long position. So we sold high, bought low, and then we bought low and sold high. So that, that doesn't look bad. And so we're actually making money from those stock trades. When you're long a straddle, if you're trying to stay delta neutral, when stock goes down, you're buying. When stock goes up, you're selling to keep your delta neutral position. And so in this sense, now your strategy becomes, will you want the stock to move back and forth and back and forth in a range? And your objective is to just buy stock, not every time it moves a penny, but every time there's a substantial move. And if you, if you have zero commissions for stock, then this is you know, more, more profitable to do. But you're buying low and you're selling high. And so that's a, another way to take advantage of a straddle. If you're feeling like it's gonna trade in a range, to just let it zigzag back and forth and to buy low and sell high without taking a lot of directional risk. You know, this is different than if you're just trying to buy stock low and sell stock high naked, if you just have the stock, because then you're taking a lot of directional risk. You know, if the stock goes down substantially further, if you buy 200 shares of stock, when it goes down a little bit, hoping it's going to go back up, but it goes down more, well, then you're taking a directional risk. You've lost money on that trade. When you're hedging delta neutral with a straddle, the money you're gonna lose could be the, the premium in these options. But if you're, if you're hedging along the way, you're not gonna lose much more than that because the directional movement doesn't, doesn't really hurt you. If it does bounce back and forth, then you can make a lot of money buying low and selling high in the stock. Okay, so how do we know how much stock to buy and sell are we going to just log into our brokerage and look up the option montage and kind of keep an eye on it. And when stock moves a dollar, then we will check the montage for the Delta and then we'll know what our deltas are. And then we'll kind of uh, track the position and manage the position that way. Well, that, that works. You can certainly do that. There are other options though. There, are, there is a way to, to measure this. We kind of know that as stock goes up and up and up, the call delta is going to go towards 100 and the put delta is going to go towards zero and vice versa as stock goes down. But what about when it moves just a single dollar? Okay, let's do it. Let's say, okay, for this scenario, stock's at 82, exercise price at 82. Our delta right now is at 52, close to 50, but as I mentioned, interest rate, et cetera, will cause that call deltas to sometimes be a little higher. So when we bump stock up to 83 in this scenario, we see that the delta has gone to 60. So, you know, it's gone up about eight. Okay, so, you know, if we wanted to get all prepared, we could go into an options calculator and sort of simulate out, hey, if it takes one day or two days for stock to move up a dollar, then, you know, we'd expect to be long about eight deltas. And if we were micromanaging our position, or if we had 10 contracts, then we maybe we'd sell 80 shares to get back to delta neutral on that call. If you're doing it for the call and the put, then it's going to be twice that. So this is what, if you, if you show the delta over time, or not exactly time, but over, over a range of stock prices. This is what the delta looks like. As stock goes down, the call delta is going to go down. Once it gets down to 79, it's going to be close to 30%. And as it goes up and up and up, 
it's going to be moving towards 100%, but it's never actually going to get there. But it can get to 99 if stock goes up some huge amount. So we can kind of see from the graph that, you know, this thing is going to go up a little bit. It's going to, for every dollar, it's going to move up a little bit. We saw it moved up about eight points, which looks about right on this chart. But is this, we really have to chart this out to figure this out? Isn't there a, isn't there a better way? There's like, there's a slope, you know, do we remember back from algebra or calculus or something like, what can we, how do we measure that? Turns out there's already a Greek for this. It's called gamma. Gamma will tell you about how much your delta will change as stock goes up or down a dollar. From this, you can start to craft your strategies and say, okay, well, if stock goes up a dollar, two dollars, or three dollars, then I'm going to need to buy 100 or 300 or 500 shares. And so you can plan ahead a little bit about when you want to do the trades, and you could even stage orders if you wanted to. You could you could put some buys and sells. You know, you could put some limit buys and and stop orders and things like that in order to automate a little bit of this for yourself if you wanted to, or just to plan ahead. Gamma tells you something else that's important, because essentially what Gamma is saying is how fast the delta is going to change. So that's that's like uh, acceleration. The, the delta is already a rate of change, and gamma tells you how fast the change will change. So that's that's acceleration. I think of it a little bit as when you are diving, if you're if you're trying to keep your buoyancy equal, you have a buoyancy control device, and you kind of put air in or take air out of it, but as you start going up a little bit, if you're if you're not don't have good buoyancy control, if you're not neutral in the water, as you start going up a little bit, there's less pressure pushing the air in on your vest. When that happens, the vest starts expanding. As the vest expands, it's now taking up more space, but you don't weigh anymore. And if you take up more space, but you don't weigh anymore, then you're even more buoyant. And so if you start losing control of your buoyancy, you don't just slowly drift towards the surface. You start accelerating towards the surface because it's a positive feedback loop. As you're moving up, the air is expanding in your buoyancy control device more and more. You weigh the same amount. You're getting more and more buoyant. And so you start to shoot up out of the water. It's kind of a runaway positive feedback loop. And if you have a bunch of options that are way out of the money, those are going to have a lot of gamma. And if stock moves, those can really blow up on you. And so gamma is an important thing to keep an eye on as you start constructing more complicated option positions with multiple expirations, multiple strikes. Keep an eye on that gamma, because if you're short a lot of gamma, that means that, that if stock moves, it could, it could do a lot of damage. OK, so. We learned that one way to take advantage of a, or one way to try to get some money out of a straddle is to, is to make some money as it goes up and down. But just to kind of round out our conversation with straddles, like what's another way that we can, we can increase the chances of making money on a straddle? So this is, this is the straddle that we were looking at before. So if we just had a call option and we're willing to give up a little bit of upside while increasing the chances of making some money, so if the call cost us $5 to get into, if we're willing to give up some upside but increase our chance of making money, like, well, maybe, maybe we can make that position cost us $4 to have gotten into. by selling an out of the money call. So we can turn this into a call spread. It brings the cost of the position down a little bit. It brings our max gain down a little bit. But our chance of making money is now a little higher because this break even point is lower. Well, the same is true of a put, right? If we own a long put, 
we make money as stock goes down. But if we were willing to give up, if we don't think the stock's going to go to zero, if stock's at 100, maybe we don't think the stock's going to go below 90. We don't think it's going to go below 80. And so what we want to do is to say, okay, well, we're willing to give up the downside below a certain point. And when that happens, we bring the cost of the position down, our break-even point down, and our chances of making money go up. But if a straddle is just a call and a put, and our call and our put can be, we can increase the chances of those making money by combining them, well, why not combine a call spread and a put spread? At that point, our, the cost of the straddle goes down and our chance of making money goes up. The, the most we could ever make also goes down, but our, but, our, but our chance of making money goes up. And based largely on the shape, this position they call a butterfly. But it also turns out that if, if you want to make money to the upside or the downside, and you don't need to make infinite money if it goes all the way up or infinite money if it goes all, all the way down, there's other ways to construct this exact same position. Let's say that this is $100. If you own the 90, if you own a 90 strike call, then you would make money as it goes up. But if you sell that 90 strike call, you're going to start losing money as the stock goes up. But rather than just buying protection to stop the damage, in which case you'd be short the call spread, short of bull call spread, the vertical call spread, you could actually, rather than just buying one, you could buy two. So now instead of just flattening out here, all of a sudden you start making money. You cancel out the first call you're short with the first call, but then you start making money back with the second call that you're long. So if this is the 90 strike, maybe at the 100 strike, you buy two calls. So you're losing money here, but all of a sudden you're making a dollar per share, $100 per contract as it goes back up. But if what you're saying is, okay, but I don't think it's going to go forever, then maybe at the 110 strike, you sell another call. And so you no longer are making money up above the 110 strike. And so what we've done is we've created the exact same position just using calls. Sold and in the money, bought two at the monies, and sold and out of the money. Because the most expensive option here is going to be this in the money option that you're selling, it's going to have the most intrinsic value. This ends up being considered a short position because you're going to, you're going to collect a little bit of money on it because you're selling this in the money option. These two are probably at or out of the money in a normal scenario, but regardless, whatever the lowest strike is, is going to be the most in the money. And so this is actually going to be a net credit for your account. So even though it looks a lot like a straddle, we'll call that a short butterfly. You can do the same thing with a put. You're selling the highest strike put, it's losing money, then you're buying two, and then as it goes down, you're making money back, and then you sell the downside potential beyond that. And you can just do the exact same thing in reverse. If you want to create the opposite position where you want it to stay within a certain range, but you want to limit your downside risk by just reversing all of those, you buy the lowest strike call, you sell the two at the money calls, and you buy the higher strike call. So these are our butterflies, and there's a couple different flavors of them. Okay, so let's let's do a quick review. So theta measures the cost per day to own an option. Theta is negative for long options, meaning that if the option goes down, or the option does go down in value for each day that passes if the stock and the volatility don't move. 
And we can see that the theta for the at the money options is different than out of money options. That for at the money options, they're the most expensive done right before expiration. And for out of the money options, there's oftentimes kind of a sweet spot. Like most of the value gets lost at some point and then owning them anymore doesn't cost much because there's not much value in them. So if you want to construct a diagonal, then you can do some interesting things to manage the cost of owning options over time by mixing days to expiration. And if you own the option that's further out and lower strike, then you're still going to have a relatively safe position where you can't lose more than you put in. When it comes to scalping stock, buying low and selling high, and I'm just using it in the, in the way that traders do with uh, when you're kind of scalping tickets in front of a theater, it's, uh, I'm sure there's, there's better ways to phrase it. But when you're hedging back to delta neutral with stock, when you're long a straddle, then as the stock moves up and down, you're making a little bit of money every time you hedge back to delta neutral. So that's another way to make money off of volatility without needing stock to move a long ways in one direction or the other. Gamma is going to tell you how much the value of the option is going to change, not just for the first dollar of moon, which is the delta, but how much the actual delta is going to change. It's, going to, it's the rate of change of the delta, which means how close is my option to being long stock in the sake of in the instance of a call, and, and how is that going to change over time? The gamma is going to tell you how the delta is going to change. It's going to tell you how, how the price is going to accelerate. The, the option price is going to accelerate as the stock price goes up. Because if you have a 120 strike call that's 14 days or 10 days from expiring, if stock goes up $1, that option's not going to change that much in value. You know, maybe that maybe that option's trading for for three cents, maybe it goes up to four cents. Percentage-wise is a good change. But it didn't change that much in value. But if that stock continues to go up, if it goes high enough, then rather than changing a penny, it's going to be changing 50 cents per dollar of change if it gets to being an at-the-money option, or it can change more than that can change 70 or 80 or 90 cents per dollar of change if stock goes high enough. So that, that's why they call it acceleration. It's going from changing a penny right now, and if it goes high enough, then the change, that options could change up to, up to 99 cents per dollar that the stock changes. So that's what they would call acceleration. It's not just gonna simply continue to change one penny every time the, dollar, the stock goes up a dollar. It's gonna start changing more and more and more the higher stock goes with those out of the money options. So that's why it's it's the acceleration of your options as stock changes. And it's going to be positive acceleration in the case of these deltas with the with the positive gamma and positive delta. Okay, so I just want to uh, to just go through a few real world considerations. Um, you know, we're likely to have some additional options education in the future. Um, but I just wanted to just kind of go through some of the things we've talked about in the course and bring up a, a few new things to kind of conclude the first four parts of this course. Okay, so this is this is stating the obvious, but but anytime you're getting into investment, you need to think about like not only do I think this thing's a good buy, but what what happens if the if the market moves against me right now? We're in a situation where there's a war in Ukraine and inflation is is high. There's a lot of demand that can't be met by the supply chain. Hopefully, those things will be working out soon. But a lot happens in life, and a lot happens in trading, and and things can go against you. And I think you know, for those of us who've been been trading a long time, as many of you I'm sure have. You've either been in the position or you've worked with people 
in a position where they've gotten themselves pretty deep in a position. And when it starts moving against them, they, they can't take the heat. They start feeling the pain too much. Maybe they're, they're too heavy in a single stock. Maybe, maybe they're too much in stocks or in options in general. And when it starts moving against them, it just starts becoming extremely painful. And that's that's a symptom of not taking the time to really think through, okay, like realistically, uh, you know, I'm not trying to get rich overnight with one stock. Like what, if this goes up down 30%, what does that look like for me? So, one thing you can consider doing if you are in that position with stock is it's starting to, to hurt you too much or you're panicking and you kind of been in this cycle before where it starts moving against you and you really want to get out. I mean, that's, that's uh, very, very typical of investors. It's hard, hard not to do that. When you start get, taking losses, you just imagine it continuing to go down. Well, something we didn't talk about in this course, but you know, or we, we touched on it, but one thing you can do is, is is just buy a put to give you a little bit of insurance, a little bit of comfort. And it, it doesn't mean you're going to constantly buy puts against all of your stock. But if you're in that moment of panic where you feel like, hey, this thing could go to zero and I, I'm in too deep, well, the puts are probably going to be expensive at that point. But you can you can buy a put just to get yourself through. Just like, okay, well, if it goes down another 10 or 20%, I know that's the most I'm going to lose. I'm not. This thing's not going to go to zero, you know, some particular stock that I'm in. And if those options, if those puts that insurance looks too expensive, then then you can always sell a call to help finance the put. You know, so you end up in a caller position. Now, what you don't want to do if you're in that situation of of near panic is is to have the puts be very expensive and to buy a put that's really close to the current price because you're nervous. But then that looked too expensive. And so you sell a call that's really close to the current price as well. So you put a really tight collar around your stock just to have the stock go up 5%. And then to have the stock taken away from you as that call goes in the money. Because maybe you took a 20% loss on the stock. And then when it starts to finally rebound, you've collared your stock. And you've only made a few percent off of, off of it going up back up a little bit, but now you've essentially forced yourself to exit at a low price. So if you do put a collar, my view is that you want to give yourself some insurance, but you also want to, if you are going to sell a call to help finance it, you want it to be far enough out of the money that if the stock goes back up to that price, that you feel a sense of relief that stock went back up that much and not that you made a bad decision by selling a call that was too close to the strike price, too close to the current stock price when, when you just already have taken a big loss. So the same same thing goes for your options position in terms of just needing to think through what you're intending to do. It used to be when I was first trying to trade, it was very counterintuitive to me to lock in a loss on your options or your, your stock to like put in a limit order stop limit in order to just say, hey, I'm going to exit this at a loser. But it's good to know ahead of time. I mean, if this thing isn't moving in your direction, what's your plan? When are you going to exit this? And it, and it turns out by putting stops and limits, and you can test this with the trade machine, you can actually decrease the volatility in your trading quite a bit. And you also can place that limit order ahead of time, and you just know what your exit is. Like maybe you're going to sell half of the options once it goes up 50% and then you're only playing with, with house money. So having that strategy firmly in head and, and, and placing some limits or stop limits ahead of time can really be beneficial to your trading and reducing the volatility of your returns. Okay, so uh, very common for, for we who have been trading options for a while is, is just thinking about assignment risk. And so it can be hard as you're getting close to expiration if, if your option is very close to being in the money or out of the money, especially if you just decide to hold it through expiration. Or you want to sell it kind of in the last few minutes and you're trying to get a good price and the bid-ask spread is wide or something, then 
you know, you might end up buying the stock. So if you're if you're long calls and your strike is at 10 and the stock's at 958 and the markets are relatively wide, you might decide, hey, this thing's only worth 15 cents. I can't get enough money out of it to make it worth selling. The, the bid is five cents. I'm not going to, it's five cents at 20 cents. I can't get out of my 15 cent options for more than $5 a contract. I'm just going to hold it, hope for the best. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. But then what's going to happen if it does work out in your favor is your, is your brokerage will exercise the options for you. When we're dealing with a $10 stock, that's fine. But you might have options that are not worth very much in SPY, $0.30, cents, $1, 50 cents. But all of a sudden, you might be buying in. And if you have only five contracts of SPY, and those end up in the money, then all of a sudden, you're, you could be making a $225,000 purchase or a $200,000 purchase, depending where SPY is. And then your brokerage is going to buy it, and then it's going to instantly sell it. And if the stock's gone down, you could have a big loss. And so this is just something to pay attention to. And, and if you don't have enough money to sort of keep the stock for a day or something like that, um, you might want to think about exiting not on expiration day, but a day or two early so that you don't get stuck in this circumstance. You know, because as, as mentioned, you know, a very small move goes up or down a little bit. If, even if you are able to, you know, have a $225,000 stock position in your portfolio, you know, all of a sudden, if this thing moves up or down, you know, 5%, that you can, you can generate a huge loss off of, off of just trying to squeeze out a few pennies out of your option position. So... Another thing is, is to think about timing of these options. So if, if you were to sell a 30 put in, in 30 delts put in NVIDIA or 30 day put in NVIDIA with a 210 strike with NVIDIA at 240 and you're collecting $315. So, so let's just imagine NVIDIA is at 240. You sell a put 30 days out at the 210 strike. Then thinking, great, great. I, I don't think NVIDIA is going to go that low. I can make some money off this thing. And you collect 315 bucks from it. If, you know, 20, 23, 24 days passes and NVIDIA is up at 219, this might feel like things are going fine for you. It's still well above 210. There's only a week left and so you might decide like hey it's gone pretty well but i just want to exit at this point i don't want to take the risk of it going any lower you plug that into an options calculator and now that we're a lot closer at the money even though we're well above our strike and there's only a week left you put some markets around that or just looking at an option montage you could be at 290 at 350 and you got in for 315, but if you want to close this, you have to you have to buy. And so you're going to be paying quite a bit to close this. And if you are forced to close it at the offer or at the asking price, then even though you feel like this thing has gone in a good direction for you, if you want to get out, you might you might take a loss. And so it's one of many examples of how timing can be challenging. And that's even more true with spreads as we talked about in, in previous class, is that if you are long a vertical spread, such as with a call spread, and stock goes all the way through the top strike, all of a sudden, as we even talked about earlier today, that top strike has all of this time value built into it now. And so that option is going to have a ton of time value into it. And so the profit that you're going to take from, from exiting the position is not going to be nearly what it would be if you were able to hold it through to expiration. And so trying to time these positions and time these trades is something to, to, to really think about. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to have a positive theta position where it's going to, your position is going to become a little bit more valuable each day. And so getting into these positions, it's important to consider what your strategy is going to be as you 
face with various scenarios like this. And finally, a really obvious one is, is market width. If you're going to buy and sell the SPY, they might be just be a couple pennies wide and you might lose three, $3 a contract. Other times, especially getting close to expiration or just how much volume or how tight things are can change. Oftentimes that bid ask spread can get, can get pretty wide. And so if you spend 50 cents getting in and getting out of a contract, then all of a sudden you're spending, you're spending a hundred dollars in, in just kind of the rake at the casino, if you will, getting in and out. So you can spend some time trying to trade and get a good fill closer to at the money or close to the midpoint rather. Um, but that takes time. And if you're, if you're trying to have a multi-leg position and you're trying to construct each one to get a good fill, then, then you have the risk of leg risk where you might only end up halfway into a trade. You're trying to buy straddle, but you only have the call or you only have the put. Now you have a lot of directional risk. So that's, uh, that's one of the complications in the options world. And so just as you're getting into a position, keeping an eye on the width of the market and, and, and just factoring that into to your decision. Okay, thank you very much. And we'll take any questions. Okay, I see one here from Dave. Dave asks, at what point would you decide that you had too much gamma risk and decide that you needed to to hedge the gamma and what would you do okay so this is going to be obviously relative to your portfolio it's going to be relative to your individual risk tolerance you might have a lot of gamma in one stock but how does that how does that correlate to the rest of your portfolio? You know, if something goes wrong in the world, it could go wrong with an individual stock. There could be a lawsuit, a CEO dies, there's a scandal. But other many times it's happening with the world at large. And so it's worth thinking about not just what your gamma for an individual stock is, but are you do you own a lot of deltas, a lot of positive deltas, or a lot of positive gamma across your entire portfolio? But when you think about, if you're in a particular stock, then a really useful tool is to, is to look at a portfolio risk analyzer and to say, okay, well, what if the market moves up or down 10%? How does that look across all of my stocks? Or just look at, look at the delta and the gamma and, and look at the scenario of as stock moves, if you're looking at an option that's that's say twenty dollars out of the money, and you say, well, what if stock moves twenty dollars in that direction? Well, just all of a sudden look at the at the money options. Say, like, what happens if this if these options become at the money options? What are those options going to be worth? Because if that out of the money option that you're short, if you're short gamma, then you're you're short a lot of those. If that thing is trading at twenty five cents right now. A really quick way to sort of provide a mental model is to say like, okay, if that becomes an at the money, then look at the at the money option or look at an option that's $5 out of the money and say, what would it be worth? Maybe instead of being worth 25 cents, it's worth $2 and 35 cents. So that, that would mean that it's going to go about up roughly 10 times in value if the stock moves in that direction. And so you can kind of mentally simulate out pretty quickly. Like, can I, can I tolerate that? What would, what are my deltas like? If, this, if the stock moves up $20 in that direction, we know those at the money options are going to be worth 10x. Well, how much money did I make in the meantime? And so there's lots of good tools to use this, but you can kind of do a quick mental model, you know, by comparing, looking at different expirations saying, okay, if it, if it takes a week, it takes two weeks, then let's look at an expiration that's two weeks closer to expiration. And rather than taking three hours and looking at an options calculator, you can kind of move around the option montage and look at different expirations and different strikes and quickly analyze 
what is this thing going to be worth under different scenarios? So that's just that's just a way to think about it. Okay, everyone, thanks very much. Uh, I think you can expect more more education to come down the road. I really appreciate you all taking the time to be here and for being members of the trade machine community. Have a wonderful rest of your day and rest of your week, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks very much.